Hi everyone, my name is Corey Padilla. I am the product manager here at Dovetail Genomics, which is a part of Cantata Bio. Today, we're really excited to share with you our latest technology here at Dovetail Genomics. And we're gonna highlight it by talking about how we can improve whole genome somatic variant discovery through our link prep technology. Now, one of the reasons that we've really been focusing on this particular technology is that there's a really big problem out there in the world of cancer genomics and molecular oncology. And that is the fact that the cancer genome remains largely unsolved. So when we say unsolved, we mean we really don't understand or we don't know what are the real drivers of cancer. And this is across all different cancers that exist. So here what I'm showing you is that on average in the US, about 54% of late stage cancers are driver negative. And this spans very commonly occurring cancers such as lung, breast, and colon cancer, and is persistent across even rare cancers like melanomas and sarcomas and things like that. And it's a real big challenge, right, to try to understand why we don't know what the real drivers of these cancers are. But at any rate, there is a need to expand our catalog of genetic drivers of cancer so we have a better understanding of how we can tackle this particular spectrum of diseases. So I think the fact that there's so many driver negative cases that are out there begs the question, well, why don't we know as much as we should about these particular troubling genomes? And the answer really lies in the fact that somatic variation is wildly variable when it comes to size and complexity. And so if you think about the things that we typically go after, which are smaller variants, SNVs and NDLs, right, where we're talking about single or a handful of bases that are either mutated or deleted or inserted in, in parts of the genome, those we can detect pretty well with, you know, standard whole genome sequencing or exome sequencing today. And then we start getting into larger structural variants, which really contain the, the breadth of that diversity, right? So we have copy number gains and losses. We have inversions, right, where part of the genome can be rotated and dropped back into its original site. We have translocations, whether they be within or across uh, chromosomes, where a part of one chromosome is popped out and dropped into a different part in, in another chromosome or even within the same chromosome. And then we have more complex rearrangements, things like chromothripsis and chromoplexy, where there are several thousands of breaks within a particular part of the genome, and they all kind of get reordered back together. But this sort of broad range of complexity contained within these large structural variants really makes them challenging to detect and describe with existing methods. And we'll talk about that more in a couple of slides, but I think one of the things that we do really want to point out, though, is that these large structural variants, although hard to classify and detect, they're really important when it comes to oncology. We know that SVs, particularly large SVs, play an important role in somatic variation. And what do we mean by that? Well, across a very broad range of tumor types, about 95% of these cancers contain one or more structural variants. So they're really prevalent. They, they occur a lot. Not only that, but these large translocations and large variants represent about 83% of the actionable SVs. So these big things, even though they're hard to detect, we do know that many of them are in fact actionable. And lastly, we know that these large SVs can be up to 30 times more likely to affect oncogenic expression compared to single, single nucleotide variants. And I, I think if you step back and think about it a bit, that makes sense. If you have a single SNP or single uh, nucleotide variant, you know, it, it may not lead to wide changes in, in expression, but if you have a translocation that's maybe five to 10 megabases, those are millions of bases that you're moving and putting in different parts of the genome and placing in different regulatory machinery. So it, it makes sense that these larger SVs were more likely impact oncogenic expression. So the reason that we wanna highlight this importance is that we really need to understand the, the, the structure, the diversity, and how best to detect these, these types of large variants alongside the SNVs and NDLs, right? It's about creating a full catalog 
of the genetic variation that exists in, in, in cancer. And so here we want to introduce our link prep technology. And the, the goal here with this particular NGS-based assay is that it will span the gap between large SV detection and the nucleotide level variant identification. So what I'm showing here are the different types of variants at, that occur at different resolutions or sizes. So SNVs and endels occurring between one base to, to around, you know, up to 500 bases. And then, you know, starting to get into large structural variant space and then ultimately through the whole chromosome and whole genome. And there's different technologies that are current standards in understanding these types of variants. So for the small stuff, for the SNVs and endels, short read, like I mentioned earlier, is really great for that. But once you start getting into the big stuff, short read starts having challenges, right? It's you need to sequence a lot of data to be able to see these breakpoints. The tools that are out there to call these SVs are constantly being updated, but they often come with a high degree of false positives that take a lot of manual screening. And so typically what people reflex to are things like fish, right? Where you're not doing de novo detection, you're more screening for things that you already know might be causal in that particular cancer type. And then you start getting into karyotyping, which is a bit more or quite a bit more de novo than fish because you're really trying to understand what the, the structure of the, the different chromosomes look like. Fish and karyotyping happen at very low resolution. We're talking, you know, 500 KB up to a handful of megabases and how you're piecing together the picture of your genome. So while those are good, there, there needs to be better refinement around the resolution that we can see these things at and sort of the de novo detection capabilities. And there are other emerging technologies that are out there, like long read sequencing and optical genome mapping. And these tools kind of sit at the opposite end of the variant spectrum. So optical genome mapping is really good at detecting the big stuff, but really falls short in detecting the small stuff because they rely on sort of fragmentation that occurs in the genome at very specific sites. And so there's gaps in between site to site, which really limits your ability to see the SNVs and the endels and, and the smaller structural variants. Where long read sequencing is really great at capturing things from a few bases all the way up to 15 to you know, 50 KB, whether or not you're using like something like a nanopore base or something like ACBio. But they still tend to rely on that coverage-based approach and so you end up having very few reads that it, that enable you to see what's really going on in these large structural variants. So it's not very high sensitivity. Not only that, it really starts falling short in some of these bigger things because if they fall outside of the length of that molecule, then you're starting to rely on, on, on less solid evidence that those things are there. So they still require quite a bit of manual curation. The solution that we're introducing today is our link prep technology, which is there to really capture all variants. So this will span from the single nucleotide event all the way up to large structural rearrangements. And the punchline here is that you'll be able to detect those SVs with really high sensitivity, but you're also going to capture more classes of genetic variants than other technologies that exist today. So how does this assay work? Well, I think it's a good place to start with the cancer cell. So if we take a, a look at what a normal cell versus a cancer cell looks like while they're alive and living in whatever matrix they're in today, you know, you'll have a cell with a nucleus and inside of that nucleus, you have DNA in its native structure. And here I've simplified it quite a bit to just be chromosome A and chromosome B. So A being blue and B being the, the orangey color. And then you have a cancer cell. And within that cancer cell, you might have a structural variant, like a translocation. Here I'm showing that by the end piece of, of the blue chromosome A clipped and dropped in to the end part of chromosome B. So this is how the DNA looks inside of the cell. So what we do is we take advantage of this and we fix the DNA in place and we, we perform our link prep technology, which is simply fragmenting, doing uniform genomic fragmentation, and then creating links. So now we have these links between parts of the genome. And if you look particularly at this translocation chromosome A, chromosome B, you can see that even though part of the translocation occurs away from the breakpoint, 
we have evidence of a linkage that will tell us something about a structural variant without seeing the breakpoint. And that'll come back around later. So once we have the fragments and links in place, we just make a sequencing library and we run it on a paired end two by 150 platform, right? And the result here is that you will see a number of read pairs that link chromosome A and chromosome B, but you'll also see some reads that contain the, the exact breakpoint of that. Where if you look over in the normal cell, you don't see really any of these crosstalk between the two chromosomes. Then after we sequence, it's really simple. We just align and we look for these sort of linkage disturbances that will tell us that there's a structural variation there. So you can see that we have these links that are coming down from chromosome A into chromosome B. And what that can tell us is that, again, maybe we see the, the breakpoint here in this read, but we get reads that are informative of the breakpoint without them actually seeing the breakpoint, which is really cool. And this is really how we are able to boost our signal. We don't have to rely on seeing the breakpoint to know that it's there, but then we can go in and refine these structural variants to base pair resolution. And through that, because it's, you know, at its core, it's just an NGS assay that queries the whole genome, we're able to do the S and Vs, the NDELs. And then we also can do the deletions, duplications, those copy number variants. And then we also have really high sensitivity for large structural variants like inversions and translocations. And so if you put all this together, this is how we can go in a very, you know, simple assay from a cell or, or chromosome structure that exists inside of the cancer cell and track that somatic mutation all the way through with high sensitivity for the large SVs and capture the single nucleotide level events as well. And so with that in mind, we can empower you to do more with your short reads. So if you're doing short read sequencing today to detect somatic variation, we can do the same stuff that you can do. Right, so if we look at the ability to detect SNVs, indels, or copy number variations against a, a true set of a well-characterized cancer cell line like HCC1187 or K562, we can see that we're able to match whole genome sequencing expectations around these very hallmark applications that you would do with whole genome sequencing. But what we can do that whole genome sequencing can't is ultra high sensitivity for these structural variants. So if we look at just you know standard 30x sequencing of, of a cell line, that's 100% tumor fraction, whole genome sequencing at best gets a little over 60% of those truth set. But what we're not showing here, and we'll talk about in a bit, is that this comes with a really high degree of false positives. We're talking thousands of false positives. And what we see in the link prep technology is at 30x, we get them all. Okay, we can downsample that to 10x. We see them all. We go down to 5, 1, and 0.1x, and we see no drop in our ability to detect these structural variants. Moreover, we typically get, you know, between 0 to uh, like less than 10 false positives in the data. Oftentimes, it's more in the realm of one or two that we see, and we'll, we'll show you that in, in the next slide. But it's not until you really go into really low sequencing or really low tumor fraction does do we like really, really low, like below 20% tumor fraction or 10% BAF, do we start losing some of that sensitivity? Which again, something that whole genome sequencing can't do today. If you start you know removing the signal, whether it's in terms of the, the tumor fraction or in the VAF, this, this signal just drops dramatically. And so one of the things that we wanted to show is that the link prep technology really captures somatic structural variants very, very well. And so here we're just showing a comparison of cell lines, either HCC or K5. And, and in particular for HCC 1187, we're able to capture the somatic variants that are there. So we're able to see the copy number gains and losses. We're able to see these large structural variants. And we compare that to the truth set, our F1 score, which is taking account how many of the truth set you get, your sensitivity, along with your false positives and false negatives, 
we're able to calculate an accuracy score, which is the F1, and we're really, really high. So a perfect, perfect score is one. At 30x genomics coverage, we are almost at one. So we're almost at a perfect score, where compared to whole genome sequencing, they're not even not even coming up on in the accuracy scale, right there at 0.12. So this means that they might see some of the structural variants that are truly there, but it comes at the cost of a lot of false positives and a lot of false negatives. And then we can take this information that we know and go into the clinical samples, right? And look at serious adenocarcinoma and metastatic carcinoma in two different varying samples, one being 72% tumor fraction, one being down to 32% tumor fraction. And we're able to really robustly capture these large structural variants and, and uh, copy number variants within these samples. And then even in osteocarcinoma, which was a, a, a nasal tumor, that we were able to detect a very strong structural vari variation event along with copy number gains and losses. So you're getting high accuracy calls on these big variants. But the thing that we can do that most other high sensitive, high sensitive technologies can't do is refine down to a base pair resolution. So if you think about you know, your OGMs and maybe other high C approaches that are doing this type of method, they rely on bend results or have limits of how far they can zoom in based on where they fragment that genome. And so when we initially make a call with the link prep data, it starts at a bend resolution. So you're taking larger chunks of the, of the genome and saying, do these linkage patterns indicate a structural variant? And when we see that, what we can then do is go in to our read data and look at the coverage that either originates from, in this particular case, this is a chromosome 112 translocation, where we can either look at the coverage from chromosome 1 originating read or chromosome 12 originating read, and we can see that there's a drop in that coverage that tells us where that breakpoint should be. And we can confirm that by doing PCR and Sanger sequencing, and we can see that, yes, right in here is that breakpoint between chromosome 1 and chromosome 12. And then if we go into our actual read structure, the, the fast cues, and see, well, you know, what, where do the alignments actually occur, we see the exact same breaks with a lot of evidence to support that breakpoint. So it's a really powerful tool that allows you to do what whole genome sequencing can do today, but then gives you this really, really great benefit of high sensitivity, high resolution structural variant detection. So how do you get access to this really powerful data type? And the answer is you can get it through us here at Dovetail Genomics through either kits or services. So with kits, we have a, a pre-built kit. You can just buy it and get off the running. You don't need to buy any additional equipment. You're not buying an additional platform. You're just leveraging your Illumina box that you have today and the pipettes and you know the tabletop tools that you have at your bench right now. And then we also accompany this with a very easy to follow step-by-step -step analysis guide to get your bioinformatics team off to the running. If you know, it's it's just doing standard NGS workflows here. So it's not like they have to learn a whole new data type to get this up and running. And we also have really great customer support to help you through your kit journey, whatever that may be. We also have services. So these are either end to end, meaning you give us the sample, you kick your feet up, and then in a couple of weeks, we give you back the results or in flexible configurations where maybe you have access to really cheap sequencing. That's great. Let's use that. Send us your sample, we'll send you back to libraries, you sequence, give us the data, we'll run the analysis for you, and you get a really great report coming out of that. With all of our services, whether you're end-to-end -end or, or a, a flexible scenario, we have a dedicated product project manager to help shepherd your project from start to end. Our deliverables here are very standard, right? You'll get a nice report, but you'll also get SNVs and NDLs in VCF format, that you've probably already worked with today. You'll get copy number variants in seg format. Again, if you've ever used CNB kit, that's what you get. And then you get the large structural variants in bed PE format, which you could plot in circos plots, or you could drop into IGV and get off to the running with trying to understand what this somatic variant really particularly means in the context of the cancer that you are studying. And so with that, I'll stop there and just say, if you're interested in this technology and what it might do for you, please reach out. We're really interested to hear about your research and to think with you about what's the best way our technology can help move your research to the next level. Thanks.